Cerro do Espinhaço is a chain of rocky formations which rips the state of Minas Gerais in half. Beginning in the east central region, it passes in a northerly direction and finally arrives at Bahia in the north. Along its entire length, natural beauty assumes proportions so gigantic that they are comparable to the very existence and importance of this mountain chain in the country. Located against the abutment of the Espinhaço can be found one of its greatest treasures, Serra do Caraça, which means Great Face. In its entrails, petrified by time, are hidden marvels exquisitely sculpted by nature. The Caraça also keeps mysteries, such as the history of the origin of its founder. When beginning in the year 1770, he installed a chapel and a pilgrimage center. One of the legends tells us that Carlos Mendonça Távora came to Brazil fleeing the Portuguese court after an attempt on the life of Don José I, King of Portugal. Owing to this conspiracy, his entire family was executed by the Marquis de Pombal, leaving only one of the Távora who managed to flee the public slaughter. Later, as a refugee in Brazil, he adopted the name by which he is publicly known, Brother Lorenzo de Nossa Senhora of the Third Order of St. Francis. Since that time, the former pilgrimage center and hostelry was transformed into a school and a mission center after Brother Lorenzo had made a will addressed to the king in 1810, some years before his death. Subsequently, several public figures of the country studied in the school of Caraça, from priests and bishops to politicians of the national scene, including former presidents Alfonso Pena and Arthur Bernardes. In the early hours of May 28, 1968, an enormous fire destroyed a major part of the installations as a result of an electric hot plate having been forgotten connected by a student and leaving the old college in ruins. Only recently, the building was partially restored. Today, the sanctuary of Caraça is considered a significant tourist attraction, meriting being declared a national heritage of humanity by reason of the richness of its ecosystem. The sanctuary of Caraça is located about 120 kilometers from the capital of Minas Gerais, on the border of the municipalities of Catas Altas and Santa Barbara. Occupying an area of more than 11,000 hectares, the sanctuary is today a private reserve of natural heritage. Beginning at 750 meters of altitude, and surpassing 2,000 meters on the highest peaks, its mean annual temperature varies above and below approximately 15 degrees centigrade. These climatic conditions and geological characteristics, as well as its geographic isolation from large urban centers, favor the preservation of a diversified fauna and flora, including animals and plants at risk of extinction. The predominant vegetation is that of transition between a tropical forest and thickets, and at higher elevations, open meadows. Every day, rare animals cross the trails of the park and arrive at the churchyard. For example, Guara wolves, the largest canine of South America and the principal attraction at night, when they come forth in search of food offered by the priests of the sanctuary. Concerned with the preservation of this important national heritage, and with the development of regional tourism, four neighboring institutions joined forces. The Prefecture of Catas Altas, the Prefecture of Santa Barbara, CIMIG, the State Electrical Energy Company, and the São Bento Mining Corporation. The municipality of Catas Altas possesses tourist attractions of rare beauty, framed by the Caraça mountain range. Its well-preserved colonial habitations and public squares take the tourists back in time to the early days. Of major importance is the Mother Church of Our Lady of Conception. Its interior remains unfinished since the 18th century, owing to the demise 
of gold production. In its present condition, it constitutes a living laboratory for students of religious art, where they can observe how constructions and painting were performed. Thanks to the influence of European culture in their history, the inhabitants of Catas Altus produce wines and liqueurs of the Jabuticaba fruit of an excellent quality, then stored in cellars of their homes or sold during the wine festival, which occurs every year in the month of May. Another city neighboring the park is distinctive in the region owing to the grandeur of its historic heritage, Santa Barbara. Churches of the 18th century, painted by famous masters of the Baroque era and with details in gold, shelter holy images and pieces of important historic value. Immediately at the entrance to the park of Carasa, the district of Brumal is a tourist attraction not to be bypassed, including the church of Santo Amaro. Considered one of the most important works of the Baroque period, it also registers the end of the gold production cycle, as evidenced by its rich interior, which remains unfinished. Although as yet in a phase of studies and of heritage registry, paintings on the sheer face of the rock located in the municipality and only recently discovered show the life of our primitive forebears. The tourist potential of the region constitutes a wealth of attractions meriting the attention of tourists from all over the world and of artists in search of inspiration. The musicians Luis Carlos Barbieri and Fred Schneider chose Carasa to produce a trilogy of classical guitar music. E escrevemos várias peças inspiradas nas belezas naturais, dos locais do Carasa, as pessoas. E esse local é muito especial para mim. O Mirante do Calvário é é o nome também de uma da primeira música da minha suíte Carasa e que eu muitas vezes durante dois meses chamei de meu escritório. In order to study the habits of animals in the locale, Semig, in partnership with the Zoobotanical Foundation, installed special collars on a couple of wild wolves in the park to monitor their behavior, registering radio waves received via satellite. With this research, which has as its objective the obtainment of strategic information for management of the species, the biologists today can study and work toward the preservation of the wolf, which still remains in danger of extinction. Also attendant to the preservation of this specific ecosystem, Semig performs a broad variety of work in the ecological station of Petit, located next to the hydroelectric dam of the same name, situated a few kilometers from the sanctuary. The reserve possesses 600 hectares of remaining species of fauna and flora native to the Atlantic forest. The subsoil of the Carasa mountain and its surrounding area is equally rich in minerals such as iron and gold, attracting the attention of companies from various parts of the world. São Bento Mining, a Canadian company of the El Dorado Gold Corporation Group, mines gold to the north of Carasa mountain in its underground mine. The activity of mining could represent risks to the preservation of the environment of the sanctuary were it not for the environmental procedures adopted by the company. To begin with, the major part of the ore extracted from the subsoil passes through a process called backfill, in which a large part of the rejects returns to its origin in the form of pulp, refilling the mine area and avoiding being launched into the environment. In addition to other activities, the mining treats its sewage replants industrial areas, sponsors researchers for studies of the flora and fauna, and patronizes activities for environmental education through SEA. Back to Carasa, for you to become familiar with its principal attractions, we divide the sanctuary in tours routed according to the type of tourism, thereby obtaining a religious tour, a historical and cultural tour, and four ecological tours. Since its founding more than 230 years ago, the Sanctuary of Carasa is attracting pilgrims from everywhere. Today administered by the Order of Lazarus of the Congregation of Mission, the Sanctuary offers diverse options. Daily Masses are celebrated in the beautiful church, considered the foremost and one of the few of the country in neo-Gothic style. It is adorned with stained glass windows in vibrant colors which fascinate the eyes of the faithful. A century-old bellows organ, recently restored, fills the ears with a well-tuned symphony. 
The body of St. Pius, a martyr from Rome, was the first body of a saint to have come to Brazil for burial. The Baroque artist Manuel da Costa Ataid was the creator of important works found in the church. One of them is the oil painting The Last Supper, which attracts our attention because of the expressions on the faces of its figures. Judas seems to be looking the observer straight in the eye. The two altars painted by Master Ataidi were maintained during the construction of the new church. As though in proof of devotion, and according to the time of year, the setting sun illuminates the sacristy or the altar of the patron Saint Vincent or the altar of Saint Francis. At the right side of the buildings, crosses symbolize the 14 steps of pain of the Calvary of our Lord Jesus Christ. Beneath the principal building of the cloister, the bodies of the founder and of previous priests and students rest eternally in the catacombs. On all sides, religious references nourish the spirit of the faithful. The sanctuary of Carasa is impregnated with historical references. Two emperors visited Carasa, leaving their evidence, Don Pedro I and Don Pedro II. In the museum constructed from the ruins of the old school, several pieces are in exposition, such as the beds where Don Pedro II and the Empress Teresa Cristina slept, and other pieces of relevant historical value utilized throughout the history of the seminary. Immediately above, on the second floor, the library keeps editions of inestimable value. In addition to volumes of more recent date, there can be found more than 1,200 titles which are centuries old, with dates of publication varying from 1489 to 1700. In matters of cultural interest, an art gallery exhibits works of artists fascinated by Carras. For example, the exhibit of photographs of Father Lauro Palu. In consideration of this extensive area of natural reserve, the sanctuary offers innumerable options for ecotourists. To begin with, one good suggestion is a visit to the Center of Education and Information to become familiar with what the technicians of the park are researching. With the assistance of biologists and of monitors and of guides, you can take much more benefit from your ecological sojourn. After facing some days of summer rain, another detail is to take counsel with a very experienced meteorologist, Father Walter. We divide then the ecological tours in four walks. In the first, as a way to warm up the muscles, we are going to that which is nearest. We go on to the Cascatinha, the small cascade, which is about two kilometers distant from the sanctuary itself. Along the way, if we pay attention, fascinating details can be discovered, such as mushrooms, lichens, small carnivorous plants, colorful insects, such as those red cicadas in full amorous activity, and with a little more luck, we may find the tracks of wild animals, such as those of a deer. Half an hour along on our walk, we arrive at the small cascade. Its waters spring from the rocks, falling into a natural pool. Its reddish color contrasts with the white foam floating on the borders, impregnated with moss and lichens. Another walk, at a short distance is to the bath of Belchior and to the big tank. At the beginning, in the shade of the trees of the emperor's wood, grills for roasting meat and bathrooms offer comfort to the visitors and security to the sanctuary against accidental fires. Following on by the trail, we accompany Father Lauro in a photographic safari. At the very beginning, tracks show the first signs of the presence of animals in the area. Olha aqui a pegada dele. Tem impressão. Ou é preá ou é o coelhinho. Continuing our walk, half an hour later, we arrive at the bath of Belchior, a stream of transparent and refreshing waters. On the way to the big tank, we note the presence of various species of mushrooms, lichens, and mosses, which confirm the title of one of the greatest natural reserves of the world in that respect. 
Suddenly a very small creature attracts our attention by reason of his clumsy movement. See how this medipalm caterpillar walks. As the woods become denser in the timid sawas or gigos, rare monkeys menaced with extinction announce our presence, enjoying the fruits of the forest until finally we arrive at the big tank, whose lazy waters mirror the paradisiacal scene. On the third day, we go on a walk of medium distance, warming up the body a little more. Cascatona, the big cascade, is located about six kilometers from the sanctuary. Along the old stone road, at the very beginning, one observes a sewage treatment station, which gives evidence of the attention of the sanctuary to nature. Further on, the bones of a wood bunny lie across the trail, appearing to be an ancient fossil. During the entire route, one can contemplate dense woods until finally we see the large cascade. If we don't make much noise, we can come face to face with many surprises. Thanks to their capacity for mimetism and camouflage, some creatures are almost always confused with their surroundings on the trail. That Teiyu, for example, is a timid lizard which at the slightest noise disappears instantaneously. Walls of stone dozens of meters high, constructed by slaves, and an oratory adorned by the veil of its falling waters. With a little more effort and care, we descend to the turbulent water below, showing the dimension of the strength of nature. The following day, we arrive to take the fourth walk up to the little chapel, Capellina. Early in the morning, it is worthwhile to reinforce our breakfast. Fried eggs with a delicious melted cheese on the plate of the wood fire is a good order. Fruits and hot cheese bread help us to reinforce our energy. Later we descend by an alternative trail and take up the principal trail toward Bocaina. Six more kilometers of trails and streams separate us from another marvel of Carasa. This time we go through fields with lower vegetation, typical of thickets, which attract our attention by the profusion of colorful wood flowers. The tracks of the peaceful Guara wolf are everywhere, as though he were following us closely. After more than an hour of walking, we arrive at paradise. It is incredible how the frenetic water sculpts natural pools between the fractures of the rocks as a gift from God for good baths. A little farther upward, the cave of Bokaina offers a different spectacle. Cascades spring from the middle of the rocks. Strange animals hide themselves from the light of our cameras, attempting to keep their privacy. Distractedly, the snake sleeping in the light of the sun at the very entrance of the cave is re-energizing itself. On perceiving our presence, it slides away looking for a safer place. Although that species is not poisonous, it is always good that we respect the animals and maintain a proper distance. The sanctuary of Karasi is truly captivating. To receive tourists, the sanctuary has at its disposition 40 rooms and apartments furnished almost in the same manner as when they functioned in the past. An imperial suite offers extra comfort to the most demanding guests. In the house of Sampayas and in the bungalows, one can enjoy more privacy. Delicious Mineran food is offered in the main restaurant, a temptation to the sin of gluttony. At the entrance to the sanctuary, or whoever opts for a quick snack, a complete luncheonette functions daily. At its side, a store sells remembrances, souvenirs, CDs, tapes, films, and items of convenience or necessity. Nature in the region offers spectacular attractions. However, it is necessary to be very careful as much to preserve this fragile ecosystem as to exercise maximum caution for one's personal safety. E se nós tratarmos os animais e as coisas 
como presentes de Deus, a gente vai preservar tudo isso para a geração futura. Don't go out on your own without the aid of monitors or guides. There are routes which for your security can only be visited accompanied by them. There are locations which are dangerous or extremely fragile. From nature itself, we can only take photos or follow tracks. No capturing or collecting species, setting bonfires, or throwing garbage on the trails. Pay attention to the hours of functioning and relax. Enjoy to the utmost what nature offers to all of us. <laughs>